for the rangers and the YBM community. Fish are obviously culturally very important, historically been eating them for tens of thousands of years. So they're really interested in the health of the fish population. So with this program, there's five different modules. Um, the first one is looking at spatial data. So mapping, GIS, where people are doing surveys, where different observations of interesting species have come from. There's the other four modules are all looking at particular aspects of the environment. So there's a module on freshwater mussel monitoring, because that's a really important resource for the Yukabaja people. Uh, then there's fisheries monitoring, so having a look at what fish be, uh, are being caught, um, what fish are in the environment, what's the community of fish, also looking for invasive species because we want to detect those early, but also monitoring the size and the different numbers of the different species and the different environments. Then there is a module looking at marine debris because plastic pollution is a really big issue uh, in marine environments around the world. Uh, and then there's also a module um, looking at birds. So there's a real mix of different activities and all interconnected different parts of the YBM country. past two days we went down and done a muscle survey which was pretty good. We've got a couple of cadets out there and one with work experience so yeah it teaches the younger generation a bit of knowledge and what to do. Mussels well they're a main um, feed source you know like for the elders they like to eat them, the younger fellas and all that. One importance of it is they're basically your filter system for the rivers and plus they are one of the main things that indicate a bad water system you know if they start dropping well yeah, we have to start doing tests and it's very important to keep them around. So the fish survey is very important to know what species are here, what sizes are here, um, how they use the river, so whether there's certain size classes up in the fresh, different size classes in the marine environment, um, and what's sort of in between. So. Yeah, at this point it's just about working out what's where, how many species we've got. Oh, we did some fishing. Every fish we caught on the hook, we had to record the size of the hook, um, name the fish, measure the fish, and chuck them back or keep them. Um, so we went to top and bottom pools. We got these pipes in a square chucked them in the spot and dug mussels out, measured them and record them and then chucked them back. There's a lot to learn from traditional learners who have been on this country and have traditional knowledge about the different species of plants and animals and the connections between them that as a biologist or an ecologist coming into a new area you know you're really looking at bits and pieces whereas I think the traditional owners see the whole interconnected aquatic and terrestrial landscape so for example um, just the way some of the observations are described it's not about time or uh, month of the year which is a human construct but they'll describe well, well when this flower blooms or when these petals fall on the water, that could mean that this thing is happening. And I think that is a much more biologically and ecologically sensible way of describing the changes in the environment. Only fish monitoring, yeah. Indicators we know about um, is the, when the waddles flower, that's when um, uh, fish are fat, everything's fat land and sea. Yeah. Um, the other thing uh, is obviously they know where the animals are. Prime example, I still can't find mussels. You know, Wayne will just go out and he'll dig up 10 in a spot around me and I have still have no idea what I'm looking at. So their ability to find animals and know where they are and describe their behavior. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can learn from the traditional owners 
in how these animals exist in the environment and their behaviour. Oh well, they've got a various book of knowledge, the elders, and half of the stuff that they teach, you can't get from books or nothing like that. And it can benefit like medicines, stuff like that, bush tuckers, they have got the healing factors and healthy attributes. So yeah, it's very important to pass them on. Rangers are here all the time, we can train them up and together we can work on a fish tagging and movement pr project. And that sort of capability that the rangers have here to do field science and field biology, um, with the addition of their indigenous knowledge of how the system works, I mean that's really valuable. For me that's really exciting. There's always new projects that are popping up from every time we come up here. There's a new conversation, there's a new bit of information, and it's like, that's cool. That could be new to science and really important for your community. They've done a couple of tests or surveys a couple of years back, so it'll be interesting to find the comparisons yeah, and see the different results. The more um, departments, they kick in the gear and start helping and doing studies and that, well, Different studies bring different results, and the more results you get, well, can't do nothing but benefit the country. So yeah, the more departments that get into it, yeah, now definitely can benefit everyone in the end. So, as a scientist, when we come into a place like this, and we're working with indigenous rangers with local knowledge, what we can do is we can put that local knowledge into a broader context of, well, you know, further down in Queensland coast, this is where things are happening. So, uh, and we've got tools that we can use to describe what is happening here. So for example, the mussels. We knew they were here, they knew they were here, they had their own name for them, but we didn't know what species they were. So as a scientist, we were able to come in, take samples away and get them DNA barcoded and find out what species they were and find that the species we have here is actually spread widely throughout northern Australia and even across into Fiji and Papua New Guinea. So the way they harvest their mussels in Fiji and some of the issues they have in Papua New Guinea, those, are, those experiences in other place of the, places of the world bring lessons back into the local context here on YBM country. So um, they know what's happening in terms of the ebb and flow and flux of the environment here. Um, but we can, working together, get everyone trained up so they are counting these things in a systematic way. And that information that is translated into the language of science, and that language of science is what is used in legal instruments for management. So by translating observations into scientific measurements that are done systematically, you know, that gives data that we can use and is really interesting to us as scientists, but it's also a process of giving information to the community that they can use to have a seat at the table and have conversations with decision makers in the language of science, which is how decisions are made, how policies form.